It gives me real pleasure to welcome our speaker today, Brenda Lou. She's going to share her screen in just a moment and her presentation on how is horticultural therapy working in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Association of Therapeutic Horticulture, established in 2008, aims to facilitate the growth of HT. I'm using HT to represent horticulture therapy for those of you who are not used to the acronym. It provides certification um, training, internship and research. And the Hong Kong Association hopes to improve the who improve public health and well-being through HT. As a registered horticultural therapist of HKATH, Brenda is honoured to represent her association to introduce horticulture therapy work in, in Hong Kong to people outside of Hong Kong. During her presentation, Brenda will share her experience with registered horticultural therapist being one of those serving as the teaching, training and publishing project for HKATH, participating in writing and editing for the HKATH newsletter, which is called Serenity, and participating in writing a horticulture therapy book entitled Flourish with Gardening, Horticulture Therapy and Elderly Services. So I'm now going to pass you over to, to Brenda, who's going to share her screen and her presentation. Thank you, Brenda. Hi, everyone. Hi, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Uh, is my voice okay? Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for Charles uh, for the invitation too. I'm Brenda Lam from Hong Kong. I'm honored to be here today to give you all a presentation. As a registered horticulture therapist of Hong Kong Association of Therapeutic Horticulture, I'm going to talk about how is horticulture therapy working in Hong Kong. The content will include today uh, the introduction of our association, the HKATH, in what ways that the HKATA's facility growth of the horticulture therapy in Hong Kong that um, Fiona just introduced for me, and what are the merits and drawbacks of executing the horticulture therapy work in Hong Kong, the linkage between horticulture therapy and the society in Hong Kong. I hope the contest today will give you an idea how the HT is working in a city which is far, far away from your country, Hope you all enjoy. Okay, first of all, uh, let me uh, give you an introduction of my association, the Hong Kong Association of Therapeutic Horticulture. Uh, it was established in 2008, and it has approached the 16th anniversary this year. HKATH introduces this concept of horticultural therapy from overseas and took root in Hong Kong. Uh, the aim of the association is to facilitate growth of therapeutic horticulture in terms of professionalism and popularity. At the end of the 2023, 2023 uh, the association has around 400 members spreading over Hong Kong, mainland China, Macau, and Taiwan. The vision of the association is to promote and develop the HT in Hong Kong, mainland China, and Asian Pacific region. If you wish to learn more about HKATH, you can take a picture of my QR code and, and the website, and you can visit uh, the website of the HKATH. Nowadays in Hong Kong, horticulture therapy has received increasing attention as an effective and non pharmaceutical Logical intervention. Horticultural therapist has also become an emerging profession in Hong Kong. As I just as I said just now, the aim of the HKATH is to facilitate the growth of the therapeutic horticulture in terms of professionalism and popularity in Hong Kong. HKATH is playing a role to serve as a platform for networking and dissemination of knowledge for the practitioners and the interest parties. 
By following the mainstream of HT model and integrating the local culture, HKATH strives for the excellency in HT applications and practice through the professional HT certification, training courses, supervised internships, and very important is conducting academic research in Hong Kong. You can see the, our missions from the slide. If HKATH is a ship, let me introduce the captain of our ship. Um, Ms. Connie Yun, uh, I, I know Connie is also um, is one of the participants today. Uh, yeah, she gave me a lot of support for um, giving the presentation today. Okay, let me uh, give you an uh, introduction for the Connie. Connie gained her professional status of HTR in 2004 from the American Horticultural Therapy Association. In 2007, she decided to return to Hong Kong to promote horticultural therapy. Ms. Fong is the first registered horticultural therapist of AHTA practicing such profession in Hong Kong. Ms. Fong founded the association in 2008, served as their president nowadays. In 2015, she received the AHTA's Rhea McCandless Professional Service Award for her outstanding service and contributions to the horticultural therapy industry. And then in 2019, she was awarded the AHTA the Charles A. Lewis Excellence in Research Award, which recognizes her effort, her effort in conducting the academic research on the effectiveness of the horticultural therapy. She also has written several HD books for the local practitioners use. You know, uh, most of the HD books are in English and uh, Connie sometimes she will translate the English version into Chinese one and she has written written some uh, books in Chinese, so to facilitate the uh, people in Hong Kong, Taiwan, or even China to learn the horticultural therapy uh, more easily. She, Ms. Fong also actively communicates and co cooperates with the international horticultural therapy partners to exchange the latest knowledge and information on horticultural therapy. She is now one of the leaders of the field, especially in Asia Pacific region, and plays a key role in teaching, researching, as well as uh, promoting HD. In what ways does the HKATH facilitate the growth of HD in Hong Kong? Um, the first thing is uh, professionalism. Let's talk about let's talk about it. By following the mainstream horticultural therapy model and integrating the local culture, HKATH hopes to improve the public health and well-being with HT in Hong Kong. And HKATH provides the training, internship, research opportunities, and certification, which are following the blueprints of the registration system of AHTA. To further strengthen the recognition of horticultural therapy, we we'll also keep to put more resources in academic research by cooperating with different organizations in Hong Kong to verify the effectiveness of the horticultural therapy. In fact, the evidence-based practice is important for professional development. HKATA strives to spread the healing power of the plants to enhance the social, psychological, and physical health of the public. With the efforts of the colleagues and members of the HKHTH during the past years, um, we sure ensure that the HT will certainly gain more popularity and recognition in Asia. The HT training is about the training courses conducted by the HKATH. The, the programs mainly modeled from the well-established HT courses of the AHTH and integrated with the local culture. Now are currently run in the collaboration with the St. James Settlement Continued Education Center. Originally, there are five HT professional courses. They are HT Elementary, Intermediate, Advanced, Certificate in HT Practice, 
and also the Certificate in Human Science courses. Then in April 2021, one of the HD programs, uh, which included the elementary and the practice one, now uh, success successfully gone through the accreditation conducted by the Hong Kong Council for Accreditation of Academic and Vocational Qualifications. Now the course is accredited at the level two of the qualification framework in Hong Kong, which is a, a milestone of the HT training in Hong Kong. The accredited program is titled, you can see it in the, the sixth one in the and highlighted in the slide, is Certificate in for Protect Horticulture Program Assistant, which comprises theory, practice, and internships. This allows learners to put the theory into practice, serve the community, and accumulate the experience in one goal. In June 2021, St. James even achieved the further accomplishments by obtaining the government's approval for registering this certificate course under the Continuing Education Fund. That means the eligible learner who has successfully completed this fund reimbursable course can apply for the reimbursement at a maximum of 80% of the tuition fee. This is, uh, we got a, a great support from the government. Moreover, the graduates who could apply for the first level of the HT professional certification system upon completion of this certificate course. It definitely helps to gain the support from uh, and the recognition from the HT from different social welfare organizations and service users in Hong Kong. On the road toward um, professionalism, HQTH has been providing comprehensive experiential training that incorporates theory and practice for the horticulture firms to be eligible for the registration under HKATH. So even the education and training programs are now conducted in China and Macau with corresponding local institutes and universities. Here are some pictures that um, the, the lessons conducted indoor and outdoor. You know that Hong Kong is a very small city with a lot of buildings around. It is hard to find venues for practicing the farming and gardening. So uh, HKATH uh, collaborates with a organic farm in Hong Kong, which is constant organic farm in a rural area for the gardening and practical course, practical class. In the organic farm, students could learn various skills of gardening and planting, and they can experience the joy with the living plants that the not much experience can we can we can earn uh, in the indoor. So now here we go to the supervised internships. After finishing the learning in the classroom, of course it is time to put the theory into the practice. The internship program provides a unique opportunity for the individuals to practice and apply the theories of HT to various target groups. And interns could earn the internship hours to complete the certifications. HTH emphasizes that the internship experience and consider it as a critical in developing one's competency as a horticulture therapist. It is also a way to ensure that the RHTs of HKTS of HKATH can provide the professional and high quality services to different target groups. In the slide, you can see that the internship in the association is tied closely uh, to the preparation to be a RHT. Although most of the information could be introduced in the courses, but uh, much is left to be cross out per the individualized internship procedures. You can see the forming elements. There here are the intern, intern supervisor, helpers, internship site to make the HT internship successful.
over the years, the H our association has collaborated with different service organizations to provide the internship opportunities for members. The internship groups include the various types of clients, including the children, youth, elderly, and rehabilitation service, mental illness, family service, and even palliative care. As the aging trend is becoming a major concern in Hong Kong, it is no doubt that the demand for the HT internship in the elderly settings is high in recent years, and it constitutes more than 50% every year in our internship group. But HKATH will continue to explore cooperation with different uh, organize, organizations to serving um, to serving different situations, and we hope to we could work with different types of clients before the intern to turn into a registered horticulture therapist. So we have a lot class, classroom learning, and then with practicals and the internship. Now we you can have a look how the the learners to become a profession in Hong Kong with the certification awarded by the HKATH. And today, HKATH is the sole organization providing the HT professional certification system in Hong Kong. There are three levels in the HT professional certification system. You can see the first level, the pink one in the slide, it is Horticultural Therapy Facilitator, HTF. It is intended for the individuals who would like to help and participate in the HT programs. And HTF is expected to have offered to complete the elementary certificate course and also the uh, practice certificate, certificate course. Okay, and then we go to the second level, the assistant horticultural therapist. And it is designed for who are wish to transition into the field of HT. The minimum requirement is to complete the elementary, intermediate, and certificate course. So you can see that the, the training courses to be completed by the RHT are the same with those for AHT. The different one, you can see the internship hours. If you wish to become an HTF, you can just complete it 60, 60 hours. For the AHT, you have to um, add to 200, accumulative for two, 200. And for RHT, you have to accumulate until 400 HT internship. Okay, this is the um, just a, 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 a picture for you to learn about the number of professional members in Hong Kong under our association. Uh, for the reg for the facilitator now is one one five. For the AHT level is eight. For the registered horticulture therapist and the HT supervisor, actually they are also the RHT. It is one one two plus thirteen. But for the supervisor, their role even they are more experienced and mature. They are to conduct the supervised internship. They will have the uh, observation and give comment and. And just like mentor uh, for the HT internship. HT recognizes the importance um, of the evidence based practice for professional development. HKATH would like to investigate the underlying mechanism of the healing power of the plants to enhance the social, physical, and psychological health of the public and whether the origin of the joy and hopeful feelings from the horticultural activities are effective. We conduct, start to conduct the research since 2010, and, and after that, we, we, we can um, publish the, our journals, in, in different journals, publish our research. Uh, the first one I make uh, introduction is um, uh, the one uh, we, published in Journal of Therapeutic Horticulture. It is an exploratory study on the effect of the horticulture therapy for adults with intellectual, with intellectual disabilities. It is uh, published in 2017. And then it is the 
In the same year, also 2017, there's an effect of horticultural therapy on the quality of life of palliative care patients, which was published in the Journal of Psychosocial Oncology. And then in 2018, the effects of the horticultural on frail and pre-frail nursing home residents a randomized controlled trial was published in Journal of American Medical Directors Association. This you can see in a, a board at the at the right right corner at the bottom. It is a word from the AHTA that I, I introduced uh, just now. It's the Charles A. Lewis Excellency in Research Award because this research it uh, recognizes Ms. Fong's efforts in conducting the, the academic research. And then, then it is um, the validation of the Chinese non-pharmacological -pharma therapy experience scale in persons with intellectual disability, which was published in the nursing home in 2019. Okay, so if you want to learn more about research of HKATH, you can go to our website. We have a, we have a, um, we have a, you have the, we have the research. You can see our more information. And then it's popularity. It is very important to make it popular in Hong Kong before the people accept the HT as one of the therapy. So, um. That's why popularity is another essential element. HKATH continues to raise the public awareness of HT as well as the availability of the professional services offered by our well-trained HT practitioners through organizing different kinds of promotional activities, like participating in the community activities and accepting interviews from the mass media. We even conduct different conferences. You can see that uh, we uh, we HKTH is a platform provide to the uh, practitioners to and different learners to interact and exchange their, with overseas counterparts by organizing the or participating in the international conference. Like the occasions um, will allow the members to widen their horizon and upgrade their skill and their professional expertise. In this slide, this is the first international conference of HT and therapeutic in landscaping in 2014, uh, conducted in, um, in Hong Kong. And then in April 2019, that before the COVID, um, we gave the chance to conduct a autoculture therapy to work an evidence-based practice symposium. And we invite the speakers from the USA and also local university where they are, we invite them to give a speech in the symposium. And in two, 2021, you know, this is during the pandemic, uh, you, um, not much people could have the face-to-face, -face, we have can meet face-to-face. -face. And so it is um, it is a face-to-face -face with the online, uh, meet, online seminar as horticultural therapy and life education. It is a one-day public seminar so besides the so besides the speech given by the speakers, we also arrange four trained trainer experiential workshops in the afternoon sessions. The HKATH also published a few reference books in Chinese with uh, reputed publishers on the techniques in conducting the horticulture therapy with different surface targets. For example, in um, uh, uh, for example, you can see the uh, in two o one nine, the the third one, um, uh, Miss Conifong worked with other professors in Taiwan and Chinese. They make the to translate the Rebecca Holler and Miss Christine Kerper's horticultural therapy methods, connecting people and plants in healthcare, human services and therapeutic programs in the Chinese edition and published in Taiwan and Hong Kong as well. 
It is an invaluable reference to the growing Chinese community of horticultural therapy practitioners and students. We even use this as, um, as the textbook in our classroom. May I introduce the latest one, 2020. You can see the, it is a special issue on the elderly, which is published in 2020 to introduce the different topics and HT protocols for the elderly populations. It has facilitated use of HT in helping the aging population. Yeah, this is a, a very uh, latest issue. Just um, um, we uh, published an online article on utter horticulture on International Society for Horticultural Science uh, in 2021. The name of the symposium is International Symposium on Horticulture Therapists, Past, Present, and Future. It is an article from our association. We uh, talk about the horticulture therapy in Hong Kong and horticulture therapy for professional professionalism and professional certification experience from Hong Kong. If you are interested, you can go to the you can take a picture of the the website link. You can go in to the link and have a look for our article. All right, let us talk about what are the merits and drawbacks of executing HT work in Hong Kong. You can see the buildings in Hong Kong are so. So together, yeah, yeah, we can shake hands with our neighbors, you know, so you can imagine. Hong Kong is a small city comparing with those living in the Western countries. Um, for example, owning a private car is luxury and not necessary in Hong Kong, I can say. So normally we won't drive uh, drive to the HT location. Instead, we will we are easy to reach various places by public transport, or taking taxi or Uber if you have uh, enough budget. Okay, uh, we are easy to reach various places. Uh, sorry, we are we are um, we are also um. Uh, we can find that HT is being implemented in various medical nursing and social welfare, as well as educational institution everywhere in Hong Kong. Space in Hong Kong is very limited. Most of the venues do not consist of any outdoor area settings as overseas do. So uh, HT, HT activities in Hong Kong are mainly conducted in the indoor area. Let's have a general idea of spacing and facilities and I will give you some pictures that we are having HT activities in Hong Kong. So normally there will be a separate activity room for the groups around for eight to 10 people plus therapists and facilitators. Do you think that it is um, enough space for HT activity? But for Hong Kong, this is enough. Normally the service users will complete the task on the table. Although the area is small, but you can see that there's a good air circulation with windows, lateral night, fan, air conditioning, lighting. Sometimes uh, in some uh, elderly center, there's a common area sharing with the non-HT participants. It is a corner of a hall, you can see that. You can see the external in interruption. I, I can say that it is not very, um, uh, not very satisfied, satisfactory, but uh, the, as I said, the space in Hong Kong is very limited and valuable. So um, sometimes the, the centers can only offer the common area for us to conduct the, the HT work. So you for the external interruption, the, just like the conversations, science, or, or other activities uh, by other people, it may make our targets, the service, the service users, hard to focus, and it may affect that to achieve, affect us to achieve the objective of the HT. And even though also uh, alternatively, our group activities may affect the external parties. 
like the smell, the sun during the HT activities, especially if we are doing the plant pounding, it will make a lot of high volume of sun. Here is another example of the elderly center. It's also a common area for activity, uh, for the TV show, for the meal and all the teams and visit there. We are in a large, large hall. Of course, um, sometimes we can have some uh, better situation. It is a private room in a daycare center. You can see it is clean, relatively large, with separate rooms, enough space for materials. And we can see the table behind the whiteboard, right? It is a good place for us to store the materials. This is more, much, much better. You can see the activity room in one of the NGOs. You can feel the tidy and clean with projector, a nice furniture, and warm color in the room. It is also good for HT activities, especially if for the for the for the for the stress for the pressure. So um, for this room, it is a very large private room for me to arrange the group. And I just want to say about this, the pantry behind at, at, the, at the back of the room. It is with the collecting water and washing is very also important for the HD activities. It is a, uh, it, the facility is quite good for this time. Okay, for the uh, planting environments, I'm sure the planting environments uh, the choice of plants and the festivals of Hong Kong are quite different from those overseas countries. Let us have a look. This is a, a setting in school. It is a platform garden in a primary school, which is on the fourth floor of the school. Sunshine and a lot of planters available here. And the instructor is the on-site social worker of the primary school. She learned the HT for applying. She wished to apply the HT in her job when she have, have her social services. And of course, she can make good use of the environment of the school provided. And sometimes we have some rooftop garden in some secondary school and some commercial buildings. We also have to make use of the window sills. Uh, not much light, not much air, and less water. But safety sometimes is the issue in some setting, especially for some special education or some uh, intellectual disability settings. You can see we can just use the small pot with easy grow plant. I will introduce later. So you have to consider the planting environment of the, your service users. If they are required to bring the plants back to their home for taking care, you have to ensure the ventilation, whether the plant can have a breath, avoid too wet, otherwise there will be insect or the, bringing the fungal growth. And the weather of Hong Kong is hot and humid, just like this way. You know the relative humidity is from 90, from 90 to 100, these two days is very humid. So these factors will affect the choice of the plants to be used. Sometimes we'll use some easy grow just like this, spring onion, the wheat grass, and the microgreen and the fruit leaves. May I introduce the flower market row in Hong Kong to all of you? You can find the living plants, the cut flowers, the seeds, the pots, and accessories there. For the choice of the plants, actually we will uh, find those easy to buy, low budget, and easy to grow non-toxic for our service users. Also consider the planting environment, whether it is just so lucky we have a garden, uh, just or just put it on the windowsill or inside the organization of the target. We'll bring them back home. 
you know, indoor plants do not need require too much sunshine. It may be good for our HD activities. Here are the some common choices of plants that our, our flower press will use in Hong Kong. Just like the, you can see the nerve plants and some aluminum plants. And then in the middle, we, we will also make some herbal, mini, make, make them some herbal bag. Our choices are spices from the Chinese that they are familiar with, such as the rose, daisy, or cementus, and some star enzymes and pep, uh, citron peppercorn, and also the dried angeline peel. This, uh, those, um, Spices that they are fam familiar with can encourage the conversation among the elderly. And sometimes, we, we, of course, we will introduce the Western spices, the Western herbs like the rosemary and lavender, which are also easily bought in Hong Kong. Here are some festivals in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a special city with comprising Chinese and Western type of festivals. Just like the, the, the Christmas in last year in 2023, we, our organization uh, conducted a dried, flower, dried a flower Christmas tree and also a scanned wreath workshop is also very common for our HD activities in the Christmas time. And also we have um, um, in the Chinese New Year, you can see in the middle, we will Make, preparing the narcissus and also making the flower arrangement in the Chinese New Year time. For some special day, other special day on the right top corner, you can see a, a lantern. It is a mid autumn festival in Hong Kong, the full moon. We will make some lantern. And also at the right hand corner at the bottom, it is a making a cut flower cupcake for the Mother's Day. Maybe you, um, I can, I'm also glad to share with you the job opportunities of being an HD practitioner in Hong Kong. You can see I, I quickly from left to right, being employed as a full-time or part-time horticulture therapist. And some therapists even established a private company or a social enterprise to offer the HT task. And then in the middle, they may play in the role of the horticulture therapists within their companies under the existing occupations. Just like the social workers in the primary school just now. And then some may be self-employed at a freelance job. Freelance job. And the association will give some opportunities, just like the internship supervisors, instructors for the classes and mentor programs. And some a therapist or some organization even apply the government funding or funding from charitable organizations to, to make the HT services. All right, okay. I know it's almost time, but I will quickly go through the linkage between horticulture therapy and society in Hong Kong. As stated by the uh, World Health Organization, the WHO, mental health is an integral part of health. Indeed, there's no help without mental health. So the government of Hong Kong also attach great importance of the mental health of the public and recognizes the mental health goes beyond the medical health, medical care. By taking this opportunity, various organizations start to seek help from different complementary therapists. Like HT is one of their choices to assist in enhancing the mental health of the clients. The Education Bureau of Hong Kong also encourages school to uh, strengthen current education through different school-based activities and encourages the different school to offer life education classes as part of the value education in schools. You see in this slide, 
uh, I was offered a job in a, a, a workshop to, over, to arrange a workshop as a mental health workshop, which is offered in a local university. This is another H, uh, mental health uh, job in the local universities. Um, our our uh, registered horticultural therapist Nicholson gave a talk in the in the seminar room, and then after that, that um, uh, me and Miss Tam also conducted a workshops for their for their students for the mental health issue. Several funding schemes include support for the children and adolescents with SEN to overcome the learning difficulties. Uh, in this slide, this is a campaign in a secondary school, including the banner exhibitions and HT talk with experiential workshops, and also uh, the workshop and also the some Q and A session video recording for their project. We are also invited to give several talks about HT versus life education, which is very common in Hong Kong. Due to the increasing demand of life education in Hong Kong recently, um, our association also over the certificate course of HT and life education and staff is a January of life education with HT. Retirement population in Hong Kong uh, continue to increase and emphasis is also given to the retirees in recent years. So uh, in this slide, I was invited to give a talk for the public in the library and um, introducing how, the, how they can make use of the gardening during their, their life and also have a video filming for the library for the project so that we can, uh, it was put on the YouTube for the for the public to have to learn how to make simple gardening at their home. And also, the besides the retirees, caregivers is also one of the concerns in Hong Kong now. HKTH keeps the uh, also keeps receiving interviews from the, from different mass media on the TV program, newspapers, and social media platforms. We will give the talks in companies collaboration activities with different organizations too. So. Um, This is uh, the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoy the content and the picture. Sorry for the quick presentation for the for the last ten minutes, and so I uh, I will stop share my PowerPoint and I will pass the pass to Nora. Okay, is it Q and A okay. session? Yes, thank you, Brenda. That was incredible. Um, thank you so much. Um, mm. My goodness, I'm almost dumbstruck by <laughs> how much you achieve. And um, I think everyone who wants to, to know more and to ask a bit more about the detail of what you were explaining can uh, use the email address that um, has been posted by your research member of your committee in the chat um mm. so that that's very helpful thank you because i've got about 10 questions already <laughs> so i i was really impressed by the work you do in research specifically you've you've to get so many published um articles research papers out there is really impressive and publishing books as well whether original text or in translation and articles as well as running symposia and training programs and overseeing the whole register and internships. It's a phenomenal amount of work and lots of that is on our wish list or we're part way towards achieving that. But um, my goodness, you're, you're um, a powerhouse of energy and achievements. And I think we want to congratulate you. And I certainly, you have my admiration. 
Um, I'm really impressed. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just just do the presentation. But I just <laughs> no. I'm no, talking no, you. I, not my job. Yeah, you all it's, of you because several of yeah, you are yeah. here today. And Connie, the founder, it's wonderful to have you here too. Um, so when I say you, I mean the association as a team, as a Thank collective. You. Thank you. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't aware of a lot of that. And now that I am, I'm, I'm really glad to know. And the job opportunities look similar to here in the UK as well, although we don't have a register yet. So, but we're, we're part way towards achieving that. We're starting to set one up. So that was great. It was great to see how much we have in common too. And also that you have a strong presence in schools. That's really important. Uh, and the media coverage looks amazing too. Well, I'll stop. I'll stop going on about how amazing you are. Phenomenal work. Well done. Um, and I want to pass over now to is it Sharon that's going to be voicing the questions from the chat, and um, to start putting some of the questions to you. See if you can give us some more answers. Yeah. Thank you. That was really interesting. Um, if anybody has any questions, if you just click on the reaction button to put your hand up or stick them in the chat. Uh, what we've had um, during your talk was a couple of questions, but they've sort of been answered in the chat. But I will, I'll, I'll voice the questions to you and see if you've got anything and then the answer and see if you've got anything else to add to them. The first one was Alison, um, who says, I think it's great that the HK88 participates in academic research. Has the A HK88 any studies into the benefits of HT for adults with mental health difficulties and then your colleague Nicholson has um, added we've done research on individuals with intellectual disabilities and el elderly with dementia to understand the effect of HT on their psychosocial and emotional functioning we are preparing the manuscripts and some of them are under review at the moment so do you have anything else to add to that or no, I I've, I've been relying on Nicholson. She is the uh, the uh, the one responsible for all the academic research, uh, for our association. She is the um the, the leader in our research committee member. Yes, and so um thanks for his uh response to Alison. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the the next question has got a response as well. Um. It's basically saying it's such an impressive range of endeavors to develop the profession, but um, she wonders how you find the funds to enable people to lead the work. And Nicholson, Nicholson has answered again. Basically, we, the HKATH, fund the project on its own, and we try to invite volunteer and train researcher helpers ourselves to reduce the costs. Also, we collaborate with local NGOs and universities for their support as well. So um, I think that's probably answered the question too. Yes. Yeah. Um, see. Yeah, the, the volunteer are the, are the members of our association. And uh, we, we will train them to how to uh, do the research helpers and we will give them back the internship hours so that they can accumulate the, the uh, internship hours uh, from attending the seminar, attending the workshop, or even assisting in our research studies. It's a win-win situ win -win situation, we hope. You know, it, we don't have much funding for the project. Every project is very tight. The budget is very tight. I can imagine, imagine. Fiona, do you want to ask a, a question? You've got your hand up. Yeah, it's just a supplementary question about that funding. Um, if you, it's wonderful that you can fund some amount of academic research. How do you get funding for the HK Association? Is that from registration fees from your members and, and registered associates, or is that from? Do you get um, um, philanthropic support or support from the government as well? Yeah, uh, actually, the HKHH is an, uh, also a non, as a charitable organization, okay, we are a NGO, so we collect the members fee for, for, of course, for the research, and then for some member program, we conduct, we will arrange monthly, and we will arrange the conference and the annual conference, that's a, a 
tomorrow is our AGM, the uh, annual conference will be will be arranged. Uh, no, sorry, Sunday, Sunday, <laughs> not tomorrow, on Sunday. So we'll, we'll, we'll make use of such the membership fee to put it back on our members. Okay, have we any other questions? We've got no other questions in the chat. Has anybody else any questions to ask? No. No, well, not that I can see. That's really interesting. I think you've answered everything and also Nicholson's been very helpful in the chat. Um, and I think a couple of collaborations are happening in the chat. Um, so if we've got no more questions, back to Fiona for to round it up. And thank you very much for the interesting talk. Thank you, Brenda, once again, and for all the members of the association who've helped bring it to this stage of impressive um, uh, standing. Um, just for anyone who's not been paying attention or looking at the chat, um, which we would encourage, focus on this on the talk, but we've been talking about how the similarities are also clear in your indoor practice. We um, quite often have to practice indoors at a tabletop, especially in care homes for the elderly in the UK, because the weather's quite awful mm. during many months of the year. So we end up practicing in a very similar way. And the constraint here is not just, is not space really, it's just terrible weather. <laughs> and we were also talking about maybe sharing um, some of those ideas, exchanging ideas for that kind of practice, those tabletop activities and indoor activities. and. Mm adapt them to people's health conditions and, and to be therapeutic um, and we also talked about possible research collaboration which we would welcome as well so it's really great to have this um this link with with you all in hong kong and we hope that will be fruitful in the future and we hope that individually practitioners here and in hong kong and, and other points in the world might get in touch and might be able to work with you because that's one of the things that we hope these seminars can do is make sure. contact. Mm. So maybe you'll have a deluge in your inbox or maybe not, but we wish you all the best for your event on Sunday. And uh, we're all the more grateful for you taking time out to come and share your work with us today. So close yeah. to your event. Um, we, um, we don't have any more questions, I think at the moment, and unless I'm missing them. Um, but I think there may be some afterwards in the survey and we'll pass them on to you um, and get some answers if we may. Um, so I think um, just I'd just like to say a very big thank you on behalf of all of us, Brenda and everyone in the association in Hong Kong for sharing your work with us. Can I ask everyone to show your appreciation perhaps by using the reaction buttons or if you want to unmute and give us a, a round of applause? That would be fantastic. Thank you. Look, lots.